This is Seven National News and in our top story. The largest renewable energy project in the Middle East, covering 2.5 square kilometres in the Madinat Zayed in the western region, officially opened its doors today. The UA president, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed al Nahyan, officially inaugurated the 2.2 billion dirhams Shams One solar power plant this morning. In the presence of the UA vice president, Prime Minister and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces. The UAE president described it as an outstanding achievement in terms of the UAE's vision to diversify its economy and sources of energy and achieve its vision of obtaining 7% of its energy from renewable sources by 2020. The plant will generate 100 megawatts of clean and sustainable energy, enough to power 20,000 homes. Mazda owns 60% of the Shams Power Company, while French oil company Total and Abengoa of Spain, which specialises in power and water, each have a 20% stake in the project. And additionally, at the opening of the power plant, four new ministers of the UA cabinet were sworn in by the UA president. The new ministers include Suhail bin Mohammed al Mazrui, the Minister of Energy and the youngest in the cabinet, and Dr. Abdullah al Nuaymi, the Minister of Public Works, who was previously the department's undersecretary. The two new ministers of state are Dr. Sultan al Jaber, who is also chief executive of Mazda, and Abdullah al Gobash. Dr. Abdul Rahim al Owais, who is already a minister, was also sworn in as the Minister of Health. Sheikh Khalifa expressed his trust in Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid's new government to enact the federal government's strategies and said that he hoped the ministers would maintain Emiratis as their top priority. Greece has announced its support for visa-free travel for Emiratis to the Schengen states that cover 26 European countries. That's according to a statement from the Greek embassy. According to news agency WAM, the foreign minister for Greece, sent a letter to the EU Commissioner for Home Affairs requesting that the UA be included to the group of third countries whose citizens do not require a visa in order to travel to the area. In a letter, the Greek foreign minister stated that Greece already submitted an official proposal transfer in May 2011, stating that the decision would be a great advantage for all Schengen member states as well as for the UAE. The UAE healthcare market is projected to expand by almost 100% this year, becoming a 44 billion dirham industry by 2015. That's according to the Dubai Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Meanwhile, forecasts also indicate extreme growth for the GCC region, which will boom into a 60 billion US dollar healthcare sector over the next decade. International consultancy firm Deloitte estimates that the healthcare sector's contribution to the UAE's GDP will grow from around 2.8% to 3.4% by next year. And this pattern is set to be gradually reflected across the region. Sultan Bataji, the CEO of IHCC, who specialise in healthcare education and mixed-use projects, was quoted as saying that as the niche market of medical real estate grows, hospitals are not only the drivers of growth in medical real estate, as education is a crucial investment in the future of healthcare of the region. And finally, looking to other news, over the next four days, a group of design professionals will be showcasing the most innovative and contemporary works from 29 galleries spread across six continents as the annual Design Days Dubai returns for its second edition. Scheduled to take place at the custom-built location, the venue downtown Dubai, from the 18th to the 21st of March, The event has attracted great support from the Middle East region, including four galleries from Dubai, three from Beirut and two participating from Kuwait. 
Event director Cyril Zamet has stated that over a short period of time, Design Days Dubai has become the most globally diverse design fair in the world, presenting an incredibly broad range of collectors. Attracting a mix of visitors too, Zamet added that everyone from interior designers, architects and even families buying works for their homes will be attending the show. The beauty of it is the creativity and there's always a very strong uh, link with the roots. If you go to Australia, it's very um, linked with, uh, with, the, with the nature there, the, the, the furniture from Mexico. It's a, it's a great mix with wood and, and, and metal. Um, we have Bogja with the fantastic fabrics um, presented by the, by the two Lebanese ladies. Each time it's really very, um, it's a journey. It's what I was saying earlier on. It's really a journey. Um, you're in Dubai, but you're visiting the world. What we wanted to do this year is really reaffirming the, um, the identity of design this Dubai to be majority on contemporary design, which is unlikely happening anywhere else in the world, and also the diversity, because we want to open up the situation where people can, with a very modest budget or a, a very comfortable one, being able to buy something. And it's what, it's what can happen here this year. Open to the public from 4pm to 10pm, Valeria Sarchi and Jens Priat are just two of the creators who will be on site to answer questions relating to the story behind their works. It's basically a net made up to, from um, nylon wires and wool. It's all about that. Basically, it's uh, these wild nylon wires and you create this net and on this net you draw Basically, you draw with the wool and you create your sketch in the hair. It's all about this. It's very simple material. That's actually the very important concept of um, the whole project is the fusion of innovation and uh, like uh, simple materials as wool and wire, nylon wires and technologies because it's also a whole 3D process in order to, of course, recreate the original sizes of the pieces. Well, it kind of changed a little bit for me because I studied firstly in Italy and in Italy they drive you uh, to production, more or less. Um, but since I come from an artist family, my dad is an artist, my mom used to have a fashion shop, um, I kind of dived into this limited edition kind of style. So I quite like things that are made by hand. So yeah, let's say I define myself more as an artist than as a designer right now. Functional art.